We shall create a life out of death. It's alive. Do you realize how significant this is? Oh, I have an inkling. An opportunity to play an utter mental case uh, in the best possible way. I mean, you're playing the archetypal mad doctor. Frankens. Victor, Victor, please. I find your promise more than a little unsettling. He's got the best of intentions to begin with. He's looking to basically improve the human condition, this fragile state that we find ourselves in. He's trying to make us more robust and he's trying to make us, you know, ideally live forever. Igor, speak up. What do you think? Everyday science and technology changes the way we live our lives. Well said, that man. There's a human obsession for, I don't know, maybe since the dawn of, of conscious thought. Life is beautiful. In the way of that, is his lack of sort of emotional and mental stability, but also his ego. He's got a massive ego. Are you not afraid to challenge the natural order? Mr. Frankenstein. No. And it's Frankenstein. <laughs> she looks at these monsters and, and sees, I suppose, the moral question. She plays devil's advocate in some sense when it comes to their experiments and asks the question, the other question, what if? We shall create a man after our own image. Questions? Um, well, you're welcome. Creating a man was always sort of the pinnacle of Victor's ambition. Um, creating a man from nothing and, or from, you know, just reanimated flesh. I think it is time you met our monster. That represents the, the pinnacle of what he has been able to do as a scientist. And that's, that's really at the point where Victor has kind of forgotten what he set out to do. Be careful, Mr. Frankenstein. You toy with wrathful forces. And there's no mercy in nature. He set out to start saving lives and to make something that was almost unarguably beneficial for mankind. And because his ego has sort of taken over and just rather than saying what's the best application of this science, he's saying how far can I push this, how famous can I make myself.